<laughs> well, hi. Hi. Not your normal faces, right? No, no. I. It's it's nice to be on the show <laughs> again. I, shades up. Uh, oh. I'm Keo, and this is the Pink Fox Playhouse. Uh, Mark is maybe in route. I don't know yet, but we'll find out soon. And uh, it's me hosting and i have a lovely guest elizabeth croydon on this evening <laughs> hi it's nice to be here i'm really excited um to be back <laughs> and uh i'm just jealous that mark got the the low the, the low rider ride on the alien ship and i didn't i don't understand <laughs> why my invitation didn't come it's because you guys make these kick kick butt snacks right i think you can say kick ass I, I can say yes, kick ass go right I, ahead they are kick ass you guys make these <laughs> kick ass snacks so of course the aliens asked mark to come on board first okay so <laughs> um first of all we had elizabeth on last week and she is a comedian and um has some great accomplishments to her some. resume i have some yes. yeah yeah and i think that one of um your latest was an event held at the new deal cafe in greenbelt maryland and if you'd like to tell a little bit about that that'd be great yes i would love to tell uh you a little bit about it uh i'm a homegrown comedian from maryland and uh the washington dc i call myself a washingtonian and i've been working uh diligently on a commercial project an hour-long commercial project for stand-up comedy. Um, right now there's a pay-per-view deal on the table and I needed to be somewhere where I was able to be loose with my set uh, because nothing's written in stone yet and I don't want to tape it with, you know, the $10,000 equipment yet. So, so when I was you, getting everything when in you do place. you show at the New Deal, do you consider that to be kind of a covert, like, you know, it's a testing ground? Yeah, it's a covert testing ground operation, you know. There's there's NASA and then there's the, com <laughs> the comedy testing zone. Which is the New Deal uh, which is the New Deal Cafe. Uh, a number of a number of uh, I don't know dissident dissident hippies uh, have been known to frequent there Absolutely. often. A uh, number definitely. of uh, of liberal greens. Uh, it's a it's a third party hangout. It's a baby boomer bunker. It's a co op. It is. It's a co op, <laughs> it's a and co -op. it's been running for a long time. Amethyst Dwyer and Dorian Winterfeld have done a wonderful, amazing job along with uh, Megan Rawl mm -hmm. and Mike I don't remember Mike's name but <laughs> I I've been drinking their beer for about 20 years so mm -hmm. when I drink beer I don't they have some I don't, good craft beer on they the have amazing craft, cra craft beer and Mediterranean cuisine oh my God, the delicious it, yeah, it's cuisine. it's ginormous, and so is the talent that appeared with me. It was uh, it was a Pink Fox Playhouse, quite frankly. I had uh, Washington D.C.'s young and funny Paris Sachet on stage. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, you know she's a straight up Washingtonian. Uh, she likes to use the word weed, as in we'd be better off, uh, as in <laughs> we'd be better off if we could all get weed snacks on the double in every state. I mean, wouldn't that be great? But uh, that's that's neither here nor there. Uh, Paris, though, will be everywhere. She is a beast. She is 24 years old, and uh, she's brave and bold and fearless. And uh, Michael Conan Walcott appeared, and he is world class, uh, absolutely. From Shakespeare to Rembrandt to selfies, um, he is a wonderful uh, new talent that I I really enjoy being around. I mean, he's new to me. I, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, where did you meet him? How did you get in touch with him? Uh, through comedy circles, through through comedy circles, he just appeared one day and uh, made me laugh, and I I love it. it. If another artist can make me laugh when I'm sitting there judging their work, thirty two ways from Sunday, along with my own su reaction, then of course you know I have this. I have to have the satisfaction of working with them. I have to. Um, so I was just so delighted when uh, he accepted the invitation, and then. There's Robert Coffey, and Robert Coffey is one of the original pot shot comics. Right, right. And we uh, would appear at Beer Baron together. Um, he is a fountain of thought. He's ready to make a deal with the Illuminati and sell out. Uh, and... Um, <laughs> And I and I'm I'm ready I'm ready to support him. 
<laughs> um, he's, uh, he's amazing. Uh, they were all amazing. And I had a wonderful time testing out, you know, new, new zones and new territories of comedy I hadn't been about. We talked a lot about weed. Um, I, I ran one of the first buyers clubs in New York City. Uh, when I was, Are you uh, serious? yeah, really? ni- 1997. Wow. To, to pay my way through art school. Holy cow. I, and, uh, yeah, in, in New York City. Holy cow is right. Um, may, may I have one of these snacks? Oh, yeah. I wish if, we if had. If you had... want to, uh, normally we wait to introduce the oh, oh, oh. after. Oh, I'm the, sorry. The first break, but we can go right well, into it. Yeah, now. let's introduce the snacks now. The I, snack today <laughs> is a gargonzola pancetta salt cheese it. Basically, we call them Yelps, um, and I think you should try one right now. They're delicious. I'm this, way excited. They're too. super flaky. This time I used a little more butter, so <sighs> a little more flaky, a little more cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> they speak for themselves. <laughs> There's a party in my mind. But we have several other flavors besides the gargonzola. We also have a cheddar jalapeno and a Parmesan rosemary. Yes, that's it. Part of the repertoire. Che- wow. Yelps. Yelps come, in Yelps come in a lot of flavors. So Mandela, Nelson Mandela. That is some good. That is some good healing <laughs> kitchen juju. That is amazing. The West African goddess Oshun uh, is in charge of the kitchen, and that's exactly where Dana Beal, this crazy yippie, would come to my house uh, in Manhattan with a sack full of weed in a suitcase uh, dressed in khaki safari wear, so a very inconspicuous Manhattan person. And he would bring weed and hand it out through my kitchen window. Oh. And if only, oh, Mandela. (laughs) <laughs> like just like it's not just the THC that makes this a great snack it's also the power of the cheese this oh, is the like cheese a is this is a gourmet yeah. snack well not only that it's a very good uh, gargonzola it's not just one that was like laying in the it's it's a delicious gargonzola fresh I'm, off the block I really wish there had been more edibles when I was running the the buyers club because we what really could have used it. What did you sh- What did you share with your customers uh, when weed, you weed, had the buyer? We just, just hand out the straight weed, and we had so many HIV patients at the time that were on the protease cocktail and in- inhibitors or the, the 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 pills, the protease inhibitor cocktails. Uh, and Ju- Mayor Giuliani had a twenty four hour lockup law that was ruining people's lives um, because if you stepped outside of your office to smoke a a cannabis stick to soften your nausea or uh, the side effects of these AIDS medications, Mm -hmm. uh, you'd be arrested for 24 hours and you wouldn't be able to have access to your medicine, et cetera. So uh, we were on the front lines of, of creating a space and a dialogue for wellness through that. And I saw miracles go down. I saw miracles go down almost as well as the gorgonzola that you just turned me <laughs> on to, man. I got to have another one. These are great. But, uh, yeah, we talked, we talked a, lot, a lot about, uh, about the, the uh, cannabis laws going on. And, uh, yeah, so going back to the show, The New Deal, um, did you, you had a, it was a fundraiser, right, or no? Uh, uh, no, Loosely, no, it was no. Kind of just uh, a group of comedians that got together. It was just a group of comedians getting together. Um, I have a couple of uh, offers on the table, and people wanted me to be able to tape a show and to be able to see people I wanted to go on the road with. And uh, it was my first hour-long uh, comedy time in a while, yeah, and how'd uh, go? it was exciting. It was, uh, it was. Uh, rough for me uh i wasn't able to give it you know the time that i wanted to had uh it been like a ten thousand dollar project but uh it was wonderful in the sense that i realized that oh i'm able to do this all the time i had had a trepidation i one of the reasons why i eat cannabis is that i have post-traumatic stress disorder and that comes from someone, uh, an, an imbalanced fan, attacking me two years ago oh my God. and throwing me into a wall um, uh, the last time I taped an hour special. So, you know, <laughs> it was, oh, so it was, this is a really big deal. It was like, like a really big deal like a, that I pushed yeah. 
pushed through that and and, and was, it was okay and, and it was right. okay it was it was it was weird it was you know I so what happened when this person what this was two years ago that someone attacked two years you ago stage. what happened well they didn't attack uh, they attacked me uh at you know at the show uh, uh what did you ask what happened to the show like they attacked you on stage were you in the middle of your show no 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 um they sat in the front row during my show and looked at me really mean and scary uh, and stared me down during my, my show, and they attacked me later after the bodyguards were dismissed. Because um, sometimes I work with security. I, I don't know if you can tell right here. I mean, you may have this problem as well. You know, you've got the wits, and then you've got the tits, right? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes people, like, don't react well to wits and tits going together. Look at all the problems Hillary's having right yeah, now. Yeah, right, absolutely. Right? And she doesn't even have half the wits that we do. Right? We've got like double D wits between the two between of us. Between the two of us for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, so he waited until after my security guards left and spit on me a number of times. And then when he lunged for my face like the fifth or sixth time, I kind of like, I did this, this move that Steven Seagal showed me. Oh my God. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know, another dude being imbalanced and completely irrational. Am I going to have to really hurt him? I don't want to really have to hurt him. And I did this move that shows him I could kill him. And he stopped for a minute. And then he got mad that I showed him I could kill him, you know, because it's the tits and wits factor again. And he threw me into a wall and I lost memory and... Uh, I had to teach myself how to go up to the steps and and what have you. And, you know, the Humpty Dumpty had to be put back together again. And this was the first time that I was able to be well enough to take the stage for an hour. Because that is... Uh, that's really that's great, though. <laughs> you kind of like got, got past that hurdle now. I'm really happy about it. I'm talking to several managers. Um, I'm, we're looking at remounting the show at an art gallery in the area. Okay. Um, I'm super excited to support all of these new Washingtonian shows. I was just at your playhouse. I know. We, we should wait. We should take a break and talk about this. I would love to because your playhouse is yeah. so cool. <laughs> and I want to ask you questions. I've talked a lot. Okay, but, so why don't we take a break right now and we'll come back to the Pink House, Pink Fox Playhouse in just a minute.
Hi, hello. Welcome back to the Pink Fox Playhouse. Uh, Elizabeth Croydon is here with us today. Mark is taking a break tonight, so it's just us, ladies' night. I know at the Pink Fox I'm Playhouse. Like, I'm super <laughs> excited about that because I I shared an evening with Mark, at absent you, uh, <laughs> all evening in in the in the Pink Fox Playhouse yes, past my, lair. Past my curfew. Aha, <laughs> uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I was hoping like I was walking in on like the main Munchie Bake Hour. Well, the main <laughs> Munchie Bake Hour is a uh, Baker's Hour. Oh, right on, a lot right more like Baker's Hour. All right, I'll be right there. <laughs> I'll be right there in the morning, 4:20 a.m. All That's right. Oh, starts. look, it's Bong 30. Time to go to the Playhouse. <laughs> So you you came by the playhouse. I wasn't I came there, by the but I heard that you were there to uh, do an interview of sorts. Yes, yes. Um, it's uh, uh, I've been given an opportunity to pull together a column for the Marijuana Times, mm-hmm. and I have chosen to look at Washingtonians. Main primarily right now, I'm looking at comedians and uh, personalities, broadcast personalities that that toke. Uh, and I discuss, we go out for an evening. Uh, for example, I went out with, with Nikki Fuchs uh, for an evening of comedy. She's an up-and-coming, she's an original pot shot comic and an up-and-coming uh, comedian of her own stylings. And uh, then I went and I interviewed Ryan Neeser, who is a monster of comedy and runs the cellar door out in Frederick. And then I came to the Pink House play, Pink f- Pink House Play Fox. I don't know why I want to say that, but I do. The Pink (laughs) Fox Play House. I went there. It was fun. Um, And uh, we we smoked from a bong, a nice giant big bong. A Medicali. A Medicali. It was beautiful. I love that thick glass. I don't know where. I can't speak now. I don't know what's happening. All right. This is I'm I know what's happening. It's the Cheez-Its. I know it's the Cheez-Its. Oh, Yelp, not All Cheez-Its. All right. Yeah. Yelps. <laughs> Yelps. Sorry. Yelps. Oh, Yelp. Yelp oh, me. Yelp. And you get right. you uh, watched a movie at the We watched a movie. We watched The Boys and Girls Guide to Getting Down, which I love. Now, you've seen that movie as well? I've seen it once. I've seen it once and What um, did you think of it? I love like many parts of it i all like so pieces of it together it it strings together oddly but it's a transcendent classic for its genre i really liked it a lot Mm -hmm. i thought uh it it had some good party advice yes uh it called out some good party personalities uh i did a movie uh similar to that called washington interns gone bad although i think our budget was even lower um, it was. What was this Washington interns gone bad? What uh, does that involve? What's oh, the going uh, bad part? Well, <laughs> I played a uh, I played a corrupt chief of staff uh, in a in a congressman's office, and I uh, bribed all of the young interns uh, and uh, paid them if they maimed and killed for our team, <laughs> and uh, and there would be rumbles at night where the interns could lose their lives and. <laughs> Uh, my congressman, uh, my intern falls in love with a, um, a, uh, an anti, a, a capitalist policy activist. And, um, she, wa- she finds out that my congressman has sold his vote, uh, to, uh, support the fast track trade authority, much like what the, the, the TPP is, uh, is held in regards to now. And I try to stop my congressman from becoming exploited and Whoa. Whoa. congressman Dick for Ford brains, D- Dick Ford brainston, <laughs> Dick Ford, <laughs> Dick Ford, Dick Ford brains. Yeah. Brainston. Um, yeah. And, uh, and it was, it was fun and cheesy and, and we pissed off Senator Rick Santorum. So where can and you find like uh, that? Uh, you can go to YouTube and see my first little effort for free. Um, we didn't want to deny anyone the pleasure of, uh, seeing the movie that made Rick Santorum have a cow in the Washington post about. So, uh, you mean he had to spend his know, important sen- senatorial time, uh, criticizing of. Yeah, well, we had a, a YouTube video. Senator Rick Santorum and I had a car accident. He hit my cab. Oh. He hit my cab door actually when I was trying to get out to a 9/11 memorial, and then he tried to make me pay for it, and we shanked him in the gossip column. Uh, and and so when uh, he was asked about my movie, which was coming out in the area, it's like a little area classic movie. 
He was like, this will not be on my top 10 list of things to do. <laughs> because everybody is referring to Rick Santorum's top 10 list of things to do in D.C. when they're looking for something to do in D.C. <laughs> right. They're, they're, they clearly go, what's Santorum up to? I want to do what he's doing. <laughs> I don't want to do what he's doing. He's eating these snacks. That's what he's doing. Actually, he needs to eat more of these, but, you know. Everybody uh, needs to eat more of these. These are amazing. Yeah, they're kind of melting your mouth today, mm. aren't they? Yes. So I um, I hung out in the lair. Now, I learned that this is like your fifth episode, right? This is number for five. Yeah, I guess five. This is five. Well, congratulations. That's really exciting. Thank you. you know, really How did this come about? Five. How did you pick Pink Flo- Pink Flock's Pay House? <laughs> More Cheez-Its. I mean, Yelps, please. <laughs> More Yelps. More Yelps. Um, Pink Fox Playhouse. Uh, yeah, we had to come up with a name. So. Right. And this is a playful environment, right? Yes, or it is. It, I, like, I'm totally... Especially when you introduce edibles. I know. <laughs> I'm, uh, but it also can be an informative place. You know, yeah. To, to address, you know... Yeah, you had Chloe Summers on from the Marijuana Times talking about a number of things that Big Pharma is doing. And we did know, have moving. Norma Bates talking about her 420 prohibition event that's happening next week on wow. October 8th. Um, it's a big gala event and it's going to be celebrating. Oh, you know, I'm really excited about yeah. that. That's the 1920s yes, prohibition. Yes, it is. It's like the great Gatsby X themed where is that again and and how do we get Ooh, tickets it's elevated events it is elevated events it's elevated events i would have to look it up and we we do have we to look it up look somewhere it up i don't know on this i could t- i could tell you i, I could tell everyone the story about Jimi hendrix and the bong while you look it up uh if okay you perfect to. i'll right, look it up okay. and you tell the bong story all right, so I was running the first buyer's club um, f- of medical c- cannabis in New York City in 1997, and my boyfriend at the time had gifted me with no uh, unextraordinary bong. This was a graphics bong with a hot oh. pink UFO ceramic base, very heavy, very heavy ceramic base with a schwa alien in a jersey t-shirt flexing his muscles and looking to the side like uh, like a Bruce Springsteen fan driving down Fort Mammoth and uh um oh it was hot so Every morning, I would sweep up the leftover herb into a dustpan, and I would I would do what is referred to as a hippie speedball. I'd have a cup of coffee and some, some bong hits, and I would hear this voice in my head that would say, yo, 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 play my music and put the bong on the ancestor altar. And I was like, okay, I'll do that, but why do I want to hear Jimi Hendrix music all of a sudden? So one day, I put the two together, and I'm like, holy Moses, Jimi Hendrix visiting my ancestor altar. So I, I bought the music, and I put the bong on the ancestor altar, and the voices went away. It was like, okay, cool, you know, who knows if that's valid or just whatever. It was one of those, huh, things. But then months later, I give the bong away to this kid uh, who helped me move and because I was on a very shoestring budget, and I, but I wanted to show him how much I appreciated. And I said, be aware, the spirit of Jimi Hendrix loves this bong. And he's like, ah, ha, ha, lady, you're crazy. And weeks later, I go to visit I say, where is the bong I gave you? He says, oh, I keep it in the closet because I don't want my uncle to see the bong. He's having, he's addicted to cocaine. He's a terrible drug addict. And I was like, oh, it's horrible. Okay, cool, but is he asleep? He's like, yeah, I'll be out for hours. I'm like, cool, I brought some weed. And we smoke some weed. And his uncle comes out. Oh, no. Uh Uh-huh. And he sees the bong. And he goes white as a ghost, and he goes, that bong, I dreamt I was playing chess with Jimi Hendrix, and we were smoking weed from that bong, and he said, yo, 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 smoke the THC, don't do the cocaine. And he's been sober ever since. He's been off of cocaine ever since. And Jimi Hendrix loves this bong. That is the story of the bong and Jimi Hendrix. Is he off of weed, too? 
No, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, I don't know. I feel I like Jimi Hendrix told him to stay on the weed. Yeah, like I don't really qualify I mean, the that. Spirit of yeah, Jimi I don't Hendrix. really qualify that as a, a drug as much as I qualify it as an herb. I think it should be descheduled. Um, it's unfortunate that we're scheduling kratom right now. Have you heard about that? Is that like the whatever the um, supplement? I guess that people were use, using that was. It's a tea, apparently. It's yeah. a tea and an herb. And it's now it's a Schedule 1. And now it's a Schedule yeah. 1 or Some any day now. Some people claim that they were using it to control their seizures. Yeah, um, apparently it gives you a mild euphoric. It makes you relaxed. Anything that makes you relaxed or happy has to be monitored, apparently. Which, uh, you know, it's lucky that, that this show is not being monitored yet. Because it makes me feel both relaxed and, and happy. happy. So... <laughs> Gardens all Yelp. Yeah, it is. I love the Yelps. Um, and speaking of Yelp, let's help folks find uh, the Prohibition Party. Did you oh, look yeah, that right? up? I sure did. Did you have um, the information? The 420 I picked out my 1920s dress. October 8th, 8.30 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. Tickets are still available. Cool. And I'm going to tell you where it is eventually, but... I'll be at the Beer Baron October 12th uh, um, for Alex Starr, Star Productions Comedy. It's a $10 door, $10 a ticket event. You can just go there and throw him some cash. And I'll be at the District Cabaret, which is Kevin Lance Murray's show, October 28th. You know, maybe the exact address is... a. Uh, Game time, like, info oh, right. deal. I remember that. It's she just listed as downtown. Right. So it's like, buy your ticket. and then Buy you your ticket, and then you'll be told, just like the like Prohibition days. Yeah. How nice. Those who know don't say. Those who say don't know. <laughs> who says there aren't secrets in D.C. Uh, anymore? <laughs> D.C. stands for District of Cannabis. And, I thought it was a dank city. Uh, and dank city, yes. Um and up. don't confess, as in don't confess where the cool party <laughs> is. <laughs> don't give up the 420 Prohibition location. No. no. Okay, so uh, we've covered your future plans um, right now. Maybe going on the road, it sounds like. Wanting maybe going on the road. On the road. Um, Do you have any shows coming up? I may be in New Mexico for New Year's Eve really? with Michael Walcott. I may not. It's up in the air. Um, there are some movie offers on my table right now. I'm looking at um, you know, various uh, deals um, of filming in New Mexico, filming in Washington, D.C., um, what else were we going to talk about before we got on me? I could, <laughs> um, uh, oh, um, going on the road, uh, staying here, you know, I'm just ready to do comedy. Like I, wh wherever I go, um, do I'm, you have any shows coming up in DC? Mm -hmm. October 12th, I'll be at the beer Baron oh, and that's, that's right. a you said the beer $10 event. And then Where's I'm doing the, 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 it's, uh, on 22nd Street, uh, 1523 22nd Street in oh, DuPont okay. Circle, um, Star Productions. Uh, and then um, October 28th, I'll be at Kevin Lance Murray um, of Phone Homie Show ah. fame. I'll be at his District Cabaret. Another thing so that DC fun. stands for is District Cabaret, and I'm way excited about that. October 21st, I'll be in Baltimore doing a fundraiser for uh, the National Legal Center for Disabled People. Uh, Where's that show in Baltimore? At uh, Canton's uh, Chasers. Chasers and Chasers Canton is the Chasers name of the Canton. bar. Chasers Canton. Chasers Canton. Freddie the Comeback Kid Ramirez is co-hosting that with me. And, I, and I'm on a diet. I'm on this incredible diet that is working. Uh, it's called the Smoke Weed, Eat Bacon, Have Sex, Lose Weight Diet. And I got to say... That's refreshing. Try it. Uh, it's written. It's a real book. You How can much get bacon it, do you need to eat? Uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> I think that depends on how much sex you get to have. I think that's a relative thing, but I don't, I don't know. No, um, four ounces is the magic. Four ounces is the magic uh, measurement. But uh, my friend Skippy Simon wrote the book. Uh, he's an army veteran, gone stand-up comedian out of L.A., and he sent me a copy of the book. And I've got to say, it's working. 
I well, when did you start the diet? Well, let me see. I start, I smoked weed. I already had that down before I had read the book. I was like, check. But you need all the components. Yeah, right, the and then I was, and then I was like, eat bacon. I can eat bacon on the diet, so I threw that in. Now the have sex. I'm I'm working on that. I'm getting ready to to date. I'm da- I'm open to being asked out on dates again. But I've been celibate for three years. Like I know, isn't that scary? A, okay. I have a power orgasm that could bring peace to well, Gaza and say, Israel. Like, what does celibate mean <laughs> I did, I, exactly? Could you well, give me the definition of that? Well, I haven't been. You know, I haven't. I haven't. No one's made love to me except for me in my very well, white then voice. Well, that counts. That counts. That's <laughs> all right. All right. So I've been having sex. I've been having sex. Uh, and enjoying myself, you know, every once Dancing in a while, I'm headed out to see some handsome man hunk, and then I'm like, huh, no, I'm snuggly, and I stay inside, and I turn up the berry White, and, and I've been losing weight as a result. Um, but you, you, so the bacon is, uh, what, one or two pieces every meal, or like one or two pieces a day? Or I don't really, I... Or smell it, just smell it. You know, there are so many aspects to Skippy's book. He lost over 100 pounds, what? and one of the and things... That, well, those, really, he followed this diet? Yeah, he really, he pounds? followed this diet. Um, and I haven't really had bacon every day. When I've had bacon uh, urges, Skippy advises... Um, he has a number of bacon recipes in the book, but he advises four ounces as a, a measurement of the meat that you have per meal. And um, and the trick to the diet in, is uh, low carb. But I'm waking, the most m- a magical thing that's going on is that I'm waking up with water and I'm no longer coughing up immediately and no longer like packing down the juices and I've cut out alcohol um, for the most yeah. part. Uh, and uh, I'm, because, you know, com- like comedy and lot, comedy yeah. and bars just pile through. You know, you you get exposed to a lot of drunks when you're a comedian in clubs, which is fine. Right. Uh, I mean, there's uh, always like a drink minimum at comedy clubs. Right. Like people are drinking. Right. It, it generally helps with the laughter. But if you're yeah. drinking, you know, and you're out in the clubs every day, uh, you, <laughs> you need to, you know, be careful with yourself. So I'm I'm drinking water every night. I'm out on the town. And that is really proving to be a maze balls. It's just uh, enhanced my. Good, at, it makes it? me feel good. It's en- enhanced my athletic recovery from my injury. I, f- I foresee uh, my clothes are fitting loosely. I foresee a full recovery and getting back on the martial art mat. And I owe it all to smoking weed. Are you a mar- martial artist? I I am. Uh, well, I really right now I'm a martial graffiti artist. I I wouldn't. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I just want to tag people. I got my moves. I tag and I bag and I go, you know, <laughs> I don't want to. But uh, yeah, I studied I- Aikido for uh, over 20 years. What? It's um, it's a Japanese Aikido means spirit energy way of life. And it's wow. it's the that only is incredible. That is amazing. It is. It is. It's the 20 years to practice anything is amazing. Well, it's a way of life. Right. So uh, so, you know, once you walk the path, well, you know, you're really you're, you're still walking that path. Uh, it's amazing because it was the only martial art that was allowed to be practiced in Japan after World War Two because of its intention to protect the aggressor. Uh, you know, you want you want your aggressor. You don't want your aggressor to necessarily wind up on the ground unconscious. You want your aggressor to Go stop to being prison and spend years like living in a dark. It yeah, could be, could be, room. or just stop being mean. You yeah. know, like it depends on where you can, where, who the aggressor is, and how you can get them I'm there. Sure but you know, yeah. hey. Have you had a bad day? You know, <laughs> to you know, I, I've taken. Well, yeah, if I like, if I tossed my Aikido, what did you call Aikido? It? Aikido. If I like, you know, threw some Aikido at you, yeah, I'm having a bad day, right? Yeah. Well, actually, I'm having a bad day if because there, are, there are there are no attacks in Aikido. There are no attacks in defense? Aikido. It's just defense, right? Oh. So I'm having the bad day. Uh, so let's say I'm having the bad day and I'm a cop in riot, riot police motorcycle gear with a motorcycle and I'm riding up the leg of a vegan hippie activist to try and irritate this darling boy into some aggressive state. Let's, I, that, not that this has actually happened per se, but let's just say that, that I'm that person and you're the vegan hippie boy. Right. Or, or no, you're me. You're me. You're me. All right. Uh, oh, wait. This never happened. Oh, dear. Okay. So. 
was really trying to get into the character with the vegan hippie boy. But oh, okay, all right. No, you're in it. I changed it. You're you're in an American flag clown suit, and you're talking to the national news media on your cell phone, and you're surrounded by about twenty seven cameras and some news crews instead and and you're telling and you've got the coolest blue shades on you have very you have four eyes on the prize you're wearing blue shades and you're telling this cop that the world is watching him as he's trying to drive up this vegan hippie boy's leg to irritate him into attack and he decides to run at you with his motorcycle oh so aikido says you're gonna flip his energy against him. So yes. what do you do? Yes. What do you do? What do you do? Um, I'm imagining that you take some sort of stance. Yes, yeah, so a super cute stance, I think. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, I like that. I yeah, like, that. Like, that. Or, or like that. Or like this. Stop. You know, stop. Yeah, that was good. That was, that was totally... I totally see that in, in the clown suit. And, and then maybe you tap the bumper of the riot cop's motorcycle Possibly. against Very his gentle. tire. Very gently... But the power that I tap with sends his power back at him. Yeah, and he pops up on the motorcycle. And he gets a little mad, and he tries to run you over harder. And you, and you do it again, like a Japanese manja pop character, Kill Bill. And you do it a couple more times. That's Aikido, that you're turning the energy against him. And then you talk him down. You're like, instead of getting him all upset and prideful that he's, you know, now made a, a boo boo-boo of himself in front of national media you're like you know and you should stop attacking people you'd be much you know you'd enforce the law much better if you were just nice to everyone and have here have a snack have a snack <laughs> have a yelp chill dc stands for uh, district of cops uh, and we need to we need to make certain that that cops uh can can medicate too. I was going to say have access. Have access, man. Safe absolutely. Access. I absolutely believe you know, that. Like they'll have trouble in the workplace. Absolutely. Amen and a women to that. We had a police officer trained in Aikido in Cleveland who was the first person through the door on a narcotics raid. So he was a nervous wreck. I mean, he was the man that decided if there was a life and death situation, wh who got shot, where to shoot, etc. And he was self-medicating himself with cigarettes and alcohol. And we got him to do Aikido. Someone who may have run a medical dispensary may have introduced him to a brownie. But he stopped having the shakes. Uh, and, uh, and Aikido is an amazing way to retrain the police because it's a totally different way of thinking about climactic situations instead of what am I going to do to top this? What am I going to do to top my fear? It teaches cops to take a breath and go, oh, I'm feeling a little uh, consternated. Why, why am I concerned at this moment? Oh, uh, is this person really uh, have an intent to attack me? Instead of the immediate reaction of going for a gun, there is an opportunity for them yeah, to think. That's a good choice. So better choice. There's, there's, there, that's all Who's I have that? to say about that. Well, should we take a break? And then I'd we'll love come to. And back, say, uh, talk a few minutes, and then uh, wrap this play playhouse up. Okay. All right. <laughs>
welcome back. Uh, we just have a few more minutes before the end of our uh, episode number five at the Pink Fox Playhouse. We have Elizabeth Croydon with us today. Woohoo! Um, she's been really great uh, filling in today without uh, with Mark absent, but. Hey, um... Well, when the aliens come for me, I hope <laughs> I hope he does the same thing if I need to be somewhere. Just want it to be a comfortable ride and make <laughs> it quick. That's right. That's right. And make sure we have plenty of edibles. Right. Uh, they're probably... on board. Uh, uh, yeah, snack. absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I think that's how they fly the vessel <laughs> is by uh, eating the snack... Powered by snacks. <laughs> powered by eating snacks. They have... Yeah, okay. All right. All it right. is <laughs> I can't wait to go home uh and enjoy these snacks in the privacy of my own dwelling. <laughs> so Elizabeth is a comedian here in DC. Are you originally from DC? Uh, yeah, I am. I, I'm a student of Duke Ellington School for the Ooh. Arts and home I performed at the Kennedy Center uh when I was a child and I've been running wild with uh, the Folger Shakespeare Theater. What, and, uh, uh, what, the what, um, uh, what did you do at the Kennedy Center? What were some of the performances you were in? When I was in the seventh grade, I was part of a... Uh, <laughs> I was a flower in Mark Twain's Tom Sawyer. No. Uh, <laughs> but I would have been a great flower. <laughs> I... Um, I was part of an, an an improvisational musical ensemble of young people, and we did a holiday show called It's That Time Again, and uh, from it I was recognized uh, for my contributions to young people in the theater, and I had a great time. Uh, I was able to go on and perform a couple more times there. It would be, I would be a wonderful thing to bring my uh, humor back there. Um, uh, but we will, s we will see, uh, we'd be better off with, uh, more humor out there and, and I'm just happy to be at home, uh, in Washington and able to grow six plants of THC yeah. and, um, I can't wait until the stigma is removed. It definitely is a perk of being a DC resident right yes, now. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You know, moms and dads. There aren't many, but... Moms and dads can light up when the kids go down after bed. You know, it's really nice that uh, the stigma has been taken off of their head so that they can live uh, and, and be recognized for, you know, with responsibility and respect. Yeah. And, and you've had, uh, you've received benefits from cannabis use as far as your own personal health. And oh, yes. Tremendous, uh, tremendous benefits from, from cannabis. And I've seen it in so many other sick people and tremendously good times had on cannabis. I don't think, <laughs> you know, everyone is like, oh, it's medicine. And it, and it is. But, you know, some people like to drink herbal tea and, and have fun. Some people like to smoke tea and have fun uh and i don't think that the recreational element should be discounted in any way especially since it's a the, you, giant disparaging difference between weed and alcohol yeah oh uh, absolutely you know. absolutely so um with that i'll just be have over here having pancetta salt yelp, yelp. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I guess if we want, we can wrap this up this week and, uh, you know, um, we can meet back, talk I again about 420 Prohibition that's happening next week. I am way excited about you that. Have, have you I'm picked really out your outfit? I haven't picked it out, but I've done a lot of, a lot of research. research? Yeah. Oh, that's so and cool. And I have some really good ideas for what I want to do with my headgear. That's awesome. I'm excited too. All, All right. right. Well, we'll see you there. Thank or you, Elizabeth, see so you much for helping me tonight. I'm really, really happy to have fun. been of service. Thanks to everybody uh, who's watching us or even will watch us later. And we'll see you next week. Yes. On the 8th for episode number six. Amen and a women. See you later. And a pink fox, too. This is Keo and Elizabeth saying good night. Ciao.
You need a website. Why not do it yourself? With Wix.com.